Hi, I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. Today's video is in response to one of your requests. We're going to do a video today using gilding polish and glitter kiss. We're going to make two cards today. Uh, I'm not going to show you three samples, but we're going to make two cards on camera. And then I'm going to show you another project that's been done using glitter kiss. This is the first of our projects. This is the second. It's the same card, but this time I've done it on glittery paper. And this is the third card that we'll be making today. And it's made using the glitter kiss. So let's get started. As usual, I'm going to show you a, a number of products that we'll be using in the creation of this. Obviously, I have to have background cards. My trusty uh, finger lift tape. I need white and for this project I used black cardstock. I'm going to use the mini robins die from D's Distinctive. I'm going to use the view die from uh, D's Distinctively. I'm going to use later in another card I'll be using all that bling from Joe Lee's. And I'm going to use some quick release dye paper. One of the questions people have been asking me is, how do you get all those little pieces out of your dye? Well, one way you can do it is with quick release paper. This is also particularly good for dyes that have a tendency for the paper to stick. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate the use of that product while we're at it today. Let's get started. Okay, first question. A very common question it is, how do I open the bottle? You have this really neat pot of, of polish. It unscrews down here and the, the sponge applicator self stores in the cap. You can twist it all day long, it's not coming out. You can pull all day long, it's not coming out. To open it, you simply push backwards. Hold the container and push backwards and it pops right out. So let's open this up. You'll see this is kind of a metallic paste and the first thing you're going to want to do, I've already done this with mine because I've used this jar, but you want to take this applicator into the sink, use one drop of hand soap or dish soap and some warm water and wash this applicator really well. The reason for that is that the first, before you use it the first time, it's a little bit stiff and it'll show lines and it just doesn't pick up the stuff as well as it should. So if you wash it, you're going to have better results. Then you're going to dip it in your solution. And what I like to do is kind of create, in the spirit of the Olympics, we'll call this a little ski ramp of sorts. Pull it up and wipe the excess off on your jar. So I just have a nice coverage amount with a lot, without a lot of extra bulge there. And now I'm just going to start applying. Now look how nicely this applies. You be sure to put some scratch paper or in my case I have a craft mat behind what I'm doing. But look at the beautiful coverage you get with this product. And it's very, very blendable. So I'm going to go about halfway there, and now I'm going to move on to my second color and keep this one handy. Move on to my second color, the purple. And once again, I'm going to dip and pull towards the side, and it's going to create something of a little ski ramp inside there. Until I get a nice coating on my sponge. Now when you finish with this, you want to wash your applicator so they don't stiffen up. Um, if you forget with this product, you'll actually be okay. It washes out really well. The Glitter Kiss, on the other hand, is a much less forgiving product if you forget to wash your applicator. So just make a point of washing the applicator when you're finished with it. One of the things I love about this product is the blendability. And we're going to take a look at that right now. You can see I've just basically, for this card, I'm just kind of covering 
One side with purple, the other with this gold. These colors, by the way, that I'm using are purple mist, and this one's called gold treasure. You can use any colors you want, but those are the ones I chose. I'm going to put just a little more solution on my gold sponge. And remember, these applicators are washable. This is a water-based product. So, if I mix my colors, don't have a fit about that because it washes right out and it's not going to destroy my applicator. So see how blendable those are? I can just push that right in there. If I get a little wider strip than I want of the blending, I can come right back over the top with my purple again. And blend that out some more. Oops, add a little extra. Add a little extra purple. Till you get just the color combination you're looking for. It doesn't hurt, it's fine if you want to give something a couple coats. But I just want some nice color mix right there in the center. So I want kind of a brown tone in between them. My gold and my purple. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do to make this card that we've looked at is look at my fingers because they're probably inky. I'm, it's impossible for me to do a job like this without getting messy friends and neighbors. It just happens. But that's part of the fun of crafting, isn't it? I'm putting these back in here for the moment, but just to keep them moist, because I'm going to use them again in a minute. Don't forget to wash them when you're done, though. And let's go ahead and cut our die piece. I get lots of questions about what kind of die cutters to use for my little tiny jobs. I use a tattered lace baby blue and for this particular job I'm going to use my larger die cutter which is a Spellbinders teal machine. I know it's not the latest or maybe even the greatest technology but it's a very reliable workhorse I've had for several years it just keeps going and going and I don't see any reason why I have to get rid of my favorite die cutter so here we go. I'm taping this down now what, I, my, what I'm creating here is I have my cardstock on the bottom next I have my die release paper honey grab me some more on purple tape over there would you please my, I, <laughs> I get every bit of use I possibly can out of my easy or my uh, easy release tape, and my little spot pieces here have been too well used to hold this all in place. So I'm just going to tear off a nice piece and stick that on there, so you're not waiting while I try and put all these tiny pieces in place. And I like to use that to hold everything where I want it now. This die is an, actually an aperture die. It's not going to cut out. It's going to cut a piece out of the middle. Keep that in mind when you decide what size cardstock you want to use because you will want to allow yourself enough margins to actually create your project. <laughs> kind of a slippery job on my craft mat here, but we'll get it done. I always go through, I often come back and go through once again. This is a fairly intricate die, and because of that, I think it's worthwhile to, while you're at it and you have the sandwich in your machine, just give it a couple goes. Run it through and back and through and back. Now we're going to check it, and if it's all perfect, we'll pull it out. If it's not perfect, I'll show you one of my tricks for... Oh yeah, this looks great. You'll notice I opened my sandwich backwards. That's one of my tricks. Open your sandwich backwards and look at your cutting job first before you release it from your machine. But this looks great. And see how the pieces are just falling out of there? A lot of it is in our quick release paper. And the quick release paper will create extra crumbs. Yes, it will. But look how easily these all fall out when you use the quick release paper. 
And the other nice thing about the quick release paper is that absolutely none of my essential pieces are stuck in here. And look at my die. I don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning my die up either because that quick release paper takes care of that. And I get rid of all my little things here. I could do this with a pokey tool, but it's so well cut that I can really pretty much just run over it with my thumbnail and everything's falling out. Okay. Didn't bring my pokey tool over here to my video area, so I'll cheat using a sharp pair of scissors. There we go. That's all done and cleaned up, so we'll get that out of the way. Wait then I'll tell me if you would while well, you're waiting and well, I'll cut my birds next. Beautiful. I'll be positioning this. Now look at that. Have you ever seen anything that pretty with that little effort? I hope you can see in the video the beautiful glimmer of that. Of that background material. And then assembling my card, as you know, is pretty quick and easy. But I get lots of requests that say, actually do it for us. So, here we go. I'm going to do it for you. Easy tear tape. I'm going to put my easy tear in a few places. Usually at least three strips. That's kind of my magic number, three strips across. I want everything to hold in place. And I kind of buckled my paper a little bit. You'll remember as I was working with it, see my little mistake here? I'm going to put just a little extra tape in place to hold that down. So I'm actually going to do four pieces in this case and just really hold that material in place so I don't have a wrinkle there where I kind of created one. I don't have to throw that away, I just have to compensate for it a little bit. Now, you'll notice that I've just pulled those off. Um, I don't tend to have the trouble getting my easy tear off that some people do, but if you're having trouble lifting your easy tear, tear it from the middle and pull it back both directions. That works great. Okay, next I'm going to fit my background to my card. And I cut these just a little bit larger than I'll actually need. Now you'll notice here, see it's going to show here, but it's not going to show through my back or through my aperture. You'll see I've got this just a little bit crooked. Don't worry about that because I'm going to put another piece over the top. I'm not going to worry about pulling that off and straightening it for this purpose because it. These are not good scissors. I need my long scissors for cutting around a card. I'm flipping it over. I'm cutting it from the back to take all my excess off. It's as easy as that. I wouldn't have quite as much excess on this side had I not gotten it off just a little bit on the other side. And now I'm going to fit my pop on here <clears throat> and I have to decide where I want this to fit on my card you can see that's roughly right in the middle that's pretty darn close to the middle so I'm going to just put my aperture right in the middle now I can go this is a design I can either go this way or I can go this way I think I'm going to go this way because it gives me some wonderful little spaces to put my birds. I could do it the other way too, but I like this way better. So I'm going to put my tape onto my aperture this time. And I want it to be fairly tight into my window without my tape showing in the window. So I'm going to put some tape here. I'm going to put some tape here. And I'm going to put some tape here. And then, 
just to make sure my edges are down nice and tight, I'm also going to put a piece of Easy Tear here and here. Now you'll notice I'm going just a little bit over the edge. And the reason for that, see this little edge is a little bit higher? The reason for that is that this Easy Tear tape, I call it Easy Tear, in the system it's called Finger Lift. But this Finger Lift tape has a strip of glue or tape right down the middle, but both sides of the strip are just paper. And so to get my glue right on the edge, I need to overlap it just a tad. And see there, now I'm right on the edge with my actual tape. Next, we'll peel our tape from here. Now this is one of those times where it's going to be a little bit stickier about coming, the paper's going to be a little stickier about coming off. So I'm just going to come into the center and tear it both ways. I'm glad you saw that because I always try tearing it from the side, but if it doesn't lift quickly and easily. See, there's another one where it just doesn't want to lift easily without the tape. Just come to the center and pull it back. And you see where it's lifting a little bit there? That's fine. It'll push down when I put the card on. But I can go anywhere along that bar of tape and lift that. Now, I want to position this one pretty carefully because this one counts. You'll see this. And, okay, and again, I'm kind of glad you saw that because, see, I still got it just a little bit off here. I'm going to trim that little edge. Nobody in the world is going to know but you and I that I did that. Me and my thousands of YouTube friends. But it's good that you see that, you know, those of us who are doing this stuff on camera, we do it just like you do. And the little fixes we make, you don't often see them, but they happen with your cards just like they happen with yours. It's a good thing to acknowledge that that happens. I had several comments from customers after I did one of the videos. Oh, the um, covering a card and insert video that people were really glad that I let you see my mistakes because it made them feel better about their own crafting. Oh, believe me, I make a lot of them. I'll also say, though, that some of the very best creations that I make, I have made covering up a mistake because it forces you to be even more creative about how you cover it up. Let's see that little edge there. I have just a little showing, so I'm grabbing my paper cutter. Holding it nice and steady in there, taking a few passes, and I trimmed that off. Now I'll take my scissors and get rid of I have just a little of that bottom layer that didn't want to cut with the paper cutter. I take my nice long scissors, just trim that up a bit. And we will have something that looks like perfection. Okay, I'm liking that. So, we have this. Next thing I want to do is put on my birds. As far as lining this card, I'm not going to line this card on camera today, but I could line this card with a piece of coordinating. You can write right over the top of this, of this polish. That would be fine. So, I'll probably, hmm. okay. that stuff, but there it is. I probably will just make another piece and put it inside, because it's a pretty background, or maybe just do the gold. Then on my bird die, it's not particularly detailed. I could use another piece of the... Um, easy release paper if I wanted to, but I don't think I really need to. So I do reuse these, this low-tech tape. 
it's not it's horribly expensive it's not cheap stuff either and you can use it again and again till it loses its tack one of the questions I've been asked about low tack tape or the comments excuse me that I've seen about low tack tape is that sometimes people say that low tack tape is still too sticky for their jobs here's another trick of the trade if your low tack tape is too sticky, stick it on your clothes and pull it back off. Stick it on your arm and pull it back off. It'll pick up enough fibers that it will be less tacky. Then try it again. It's as simple as that to get it less sticky. Mine is I want it to last forever, so I want, always want it to be more sticky, but I don't want it to stick so that I can't. See there, there's all my little birds. Look at these cute little birds. You get all these birds in one pass with that dye. And we're not going to use all those birds this time. But you do get a bunch of choices. You can tell my cutting plates are very well loved. So let's bring these little birds. And, oh, I forgot to bring t uh, glue. Get some cosmic shimmer glue, please. It's the bottle. It's upside down. Thank you. My honey's such a good guy. My honey slash cameraman slash partner in life. He deserves to a medal for putting up with me. Okay, let's see if this is going to come out this time. Okay. It's going to be difficult. I let it sit all night and didn't clear the little tip, so let's open that up. Get rid of that extra glue. I used a pen in my, in my glue that said that it was stainless steel. It wasn't. So now I have a little rust in my glue. It won't hurt anything. It won't show. It's just irritating. Well, let's see. I'm going to put this big fat robin right here where he'll really show in that moonlight. And let's put another one. I can use my birds to actually kind of tack these branches down a little bit. See how some of the branches are wanting to kind of stand up? I can use my birds to actually hold those down. So here's another. Whoops. Glad it's clear glue. And finally, let's. Yeah, I got a little bird. All these decisions in life. I put the birds in a different place every time I make this card. I think I want this another one facing the other, so I think I'll put him there. That's why I like that little tiny tip that I had on here at first. It keeps so much glue from coming out, then you don't have problems like that glue trying to squish out underneath. And there we go. There's our finished card. Might put a greeting of some sort here. Could potentially put some borders around it, but you get a real good idea of how to use that gilding polish here. So that's that one. The next card I want to make with you is a variation of this one because I happen to have these materials available. I'm not going to actually assemble this one, but I want to go through the actual use of the material with you. You've seen me put one together. You don't want to sit through that. But this is a card that I've done with the Glitter Kiss. And here again is our gilding polish. So you can really see the difference. This one has a lot of sparkle. I also happen to have used glittered cardstock with this one, which was a fun effect. And I thought these little flowers were a really nice complement to the colors in the card. So let's, let's try using some Glitter Kiss. Get my cardstock out here again. Now Glitter Kiss is a very, it's, it looks similar, it's by the same people, but it's a very different product to use. 
other than the fact that the applicators work the same way, just push them with your thumb, they'll pop right out. On the inside, once again, you're going to prime your sponge. That means you're going to go in, take it in, wash it good. Just a little soap and water. You don't need to leave your sponge wet. You can uh, dry it off a little bit. Now, when you apply the glitter kiss, the real trick to having success with glitter kiss is don't try to get the finished results in a single pass. This is going to take two, three, four coats to get the finish I just showed you. When it goes on, it's very light. In fact, you'll wonder if it's going on at all. But I want to show you something. If I keep trying to go over it, I'm picking up the glitter. That's why I said it's multiple coat product. Get your kiss on your sponge. And just go ever so lightly over the entire thing. If you get it on too heavy somewhere, you know how to pick it up. Just keep going over that area because it's going to pick up. The first coat, you're going to wonder if you're getting any at all. You're not doing anything wrong. That's the way this product works. Now you can put it a little heavier if you're going like on the edge of a card or something. But just remember, the more you swipe at something, the more you're going to pick it up. So just be satisfied that you're kind of priming, almost priming the cardstock with the first application. And it's going to take a couple of, a couple of coats to get a really solid coverage if that's what you want. The two colors I'm using here, I'll read the labels to you in just a minute. I think this is called, wasn't this called Sapphire Pink or something? Any? Is it Sapphire Pink? Pink Sapphire Kiss. They were close. Try and wipe those big globs off. That's why this whole ski ramp approach works well. Because if you get those big globs on there, you get a really uneven coat. And I don't know about you, that really kind of bugs me if I get it really uneven. So I'm just putting down a base coat. And again, I'm not worrying that it's not putting a lot of material on there the first time. Then we're going to set this aside to dry. And while it's drying, it'll only take a minute to dry. But while it's drying, I want to show you another project that's been done with Glitter Kiss. Let's set this aside just for a minute. This is a project that my friend Laura did that I just love. And it's a perfect example of, what, of, of another kind of application for Glitter Kiss. A friend of hers gave her this wooden box and she brought it over and said, I want to make something for a special Valentine's dinner, a special Valentine's evening. I'd like to put candles in it. What can we do with it? And because I'd been playing with glitter kiss and the gilding polish, I, that was the first product I thought about for painting her box. So she completely covered her box with the glitter kiss and she has probably two good coats on everything. In addition to the gold glitter kiss that she applied, um, she applied it everywhere with the sponge applicator but then when she had little fine areas like this or around the edges on the inside of her box, she used a paintbrush in the glitter kiss to get in those little um, harder to reach areas. We used the sparkly velveteen ribbon that we have available in the store. Isn't that burgundy ribbon just special? This is a little rhinestone trim that I picked up years ago that I had in my craft stash. You may have something similar. You could certainly do that with any um, rhinestone product that's in long strings, but this is one that I already had. Um, we applied um, 
We actually put red liner tape on the back of this sparkly ribbon because we wanted this to be durable and to last more than one season. So we used um, red liner tape on the back of these. This already had adhesive on the back. We used um, the best glue ever on our candles to apply these little rhinestones, which were once again these little heart-shaped rhinestones were right out of my craft stash. And we used the best glue ever on the back. As you know, best glue ever will stick better if you actually apply the glue to the back, we put a little dot on the back of each of them, and then we just let it dry so it became like a tiny glue dot. And then we stuck those on so they're there to stay. We used um, red liner tape again to put these on. We used, I, I made this little tiny bouquet for her to go in the front of the box just because I wanted another thing that had some color. And in this we used um, wine color velveteen papers, forest green velveteen, and these little buds in the center, so the, the stamen in the center of the flowers. That's a new product that's coming soon. Um, the flowers are cut, the flowers and leaves you may recognize, they come from the Flower Frenzy dye. But I think, and I use Cosmic Shimmer Glue to put the flowers together, but didn't, and then she just purchased some of these little um, glass marble disc things to go in there, but I think this turned out absolutely spectacularly, and it was a really fun seasonal project, so I thought we'd go ahead and show you that. Okay, let's get on with coat two. Again, I'm not getting lots of globs on there. I just kind of want a nice, even coat. And you can see as I put coat two over the top, I'm beginning to get a little more coverage. It's still not going to be enough to finish. I'm going to need at least three coats. Because you can see, just like before, if I go over the same place repeatedly, it's going to it's going to just pick it up so patience is the key for using glitter kiss it'll just take it back off if you keep going over the same spaces and you don't want to put on massively thick coats just go see I got a little too much in a glob there just go slow and easy And you were getting closer to getting final coat. You can see that. We'll do one more coat here. There's our gold. That's looking good. And here comes the pink sapphire, the gold. By the way, I promised to tell you what that is. That is Sahara Gold Kiss. We have like three golds, and they're all very, very similar. They have slightly different colorations, but... I think any of them would have done another, there's kind of an apricot color and gilding polish that's really pretty. There's there's any number of combinations. I could have done the sky in blue and I could have done the lower part in green. There's any number of combinations I could use with this dye. But think about, you're not locked into using this dye with this project. Take a look at your dye stash. I know you all have one. I certainly do. And look at dyes that have an aperture kind of cut that show the background through. And think about how you can create backgrounds using this fun and interesting product to make your own backgrounds. I just love the sparkly effect. Of course, we know I like glitter and all things that sparkle. It makes me happy. My husband's talking all the time about the messiest part of the new shop is where I'm glittering, but I'm a very happy glitterer. That's got to count for something, right? One more swipe over this and I'll let this... And you can see, you know, you might be happy with the results at this point. I probably would go over one more time. So I'm going to let this dry for oh, probably two to three minutes, and then we'll put our final coat on here. Okay. 
Okay, let's put on our final coat here. I'm sure that three coats will be quite sufficient. A few of you have written to me and said, I just don't think I'm doing this right because it's just not covering right. But look how beautifully it will cover if you do it in multiple coats. So there's your key. Light coats, multiple coats, and you'll get beautiful coverage. See, isn't that looking nice? I actually want this. This one doesn't totally blend like our other product, but I can kind of sweep over the sides a little bit and kind of get a blended motion in the center. So I guess it does blend. It just, I'm doing the blending by covering one over the other. So I think that looks great with our gold. I don't think we need any more there. Set that aside to wash it. Switch products here. And let's work on our sapphire a little bit. I was pleased with the outcome of this because these happen to have been two of the bottles I had open in the shop and I didn't know how this would work out on my trial project when I tried these colors, but I was really delighted with the results of using pink and gold. Who'd have thought of pink and gold in the back of a bird scene, but it worked really nicely. Give me the effect I wanted. Just remember, not too many sweeps over any place or it's just going to be a waste of time because we'll be picking up the product to put down. And I think we have a nice even coat. So I think that should get the job done. Now, as I said, I'm not going to assemble this on camera entirely, but I did want to show you while we were off camera, I just wondered I mean, I have to play. I had already done one with glitter paper and with plain paper. I wondered what would happen if I used a piece of velveteen. So here we go. Let's look how our velvet paper would work. Actually, I think this is really nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the card this way and just leave it, the bigger border, around the outside. I think that's really pretty to have that outside glittery part showing. And look at that black rich velveteen on top of there. Isn't that beautiful? And here's our birds. I cut some little black velvet birds while I was waiting too. So of course they will help set this down, you know, them anchor this velveteen a bit when I when I glue the birds in place. But there you go. That's our Glitter Kiss project. So, in our video today, we have seen I didn't show both of these, but here are my two cards that I did using the gilding polish prior to making the video and here's the one we made on the video. All of them are slightly different. This one I made on an A2 four and a quarter by five and a half card so yes you can use that die or again you know check out your check out your collection and see what you have in dies available that you can use this technique with. Here's one done with the glittery paper and in this one I used, uh, I just took Glitter Kiss around the, or excuse me, not Glitter Kiss, um, Gilding Polish around the edges of my card and then matted a slightly smaller glitter paper on top of that because I really like the way that shimmer kind of pulled the colors in the card. Here's the one we did today and again I probably put some embellishments of some kind on here but beautiful. Here was our sample card. Here's the card we've made together. And I'll go ahead and finish that up for my card stash. We'll probably use this as a class project too. And finally, I want to just give you one more glimpse at Laura's project because I really do think that's particularly beautiful and seasonal. 
all these rocks in it. We have to kind of support the bottom, but didn't that turn out beautiful? And look at the beautiful finish you can get on that box using the, the glitter kiss. So I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. If you're not already subscribed to our newsletter, please do so. We'll send you, if you're a newsletter subscriber, you get a, a notice that a new video is out there and a supplies list of everything we've used in the creation of our projects. You can find our store at www.simplyspecialcrafts.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page for a sign up for newsletter link. We'll see you next time.